time. But defense at the last second forced him to make a cause forced him to commit a turnover. UMBC with the ball. Brandon Horvath looking for somebody available. We'll go to Atkin. Atkin back to Horvath to the left wing for Adorock. Adorock guarded by Hobway. We got to the right wing for Kennedy. Kennedy going inside for Atkin, getting double teamed. Have to go back out to Adorock. Eight left to shoot. Hobway guarding him. He goes over to Bunya. He slipped, loses the ball, and they'll call traveling because of that. Jacob Bunyasis. He's slipped. Very unfortunate. And it's another UMBC turnover. Yeah, no one's coming out to wipe up the floor. Usually when you watch NBA games, somebody slips. You have 15 people coming out on the court and wiping everything down. Imagine from all the sweat that the players are starting to shake off. So McKenzie has the ball as he crosses the timeline. Trying to move it inside. out to go out for Stevenson Moore. Stevenson Moore looking for somebody available inside the sales left wing. He'll push it inside for a mid-range jumper. Misses. Rebound being fought for and almost picked up by Hobway. But Ida Rock will pick it up instead. It goes over to Horvath, left wing, guarded well by McKenzie. Pushing it inside against him. Had to go over out to the right wing for Kennedy. He'll take a deep three, and good. Keandre Kennedy can shoot deep from well. He's, he's just, well, actually, he doesn't shoot much, actually. He's just over 17%, which is very unusual how he makes a three. UMBC retakes their one-point lead. Sales with the ball to right wing. He'll go over to Hobway, he'll take a three. Can't respond. Idlerock picks up the rebound. Idle Rock will take the ball near his side now. Goes out to Akin. Akin over to Horvath. Too strong for him and picked up by Rodriguez. Rodriguez over to McKenzie left wing. He'll take on the contested three. Bang! Jordan McKenzie. He'll respond off of the three-pointer made by Keandre Kennedy. And Stony Brook back up 15 to 13. An exchange of threes. That's the last few shots that both teams have made. Ten minutes left to go in the first half. Horvath to Kennedy. Kennedy just had the three for UMBC. He'll go out to the top for Atkin. Atkin over to Jacob, right wing. Going inside the aisle rack, blocked away well by McKenzie and picked up by Rodriguez. Rodriguez will slow it down. Out to the right wing for Stevenson. Moore, he'll try a three. Went too strong off the left rim, and the rebound's picked up by Isle Rock. You can't get too careless. Both teams have had, both teams have been able to shoot three, make three shots from deep today. That's why, still, that's why it's been pretty close. Keandre Kennedy trying to push it inside against Stevenson Moore. Goes over to Atkin, guarded well by Sales. Layup is blocked, call, foul called against Sales. That's his first. This is the time for Stony Brook to take advantage and sort of blow up any sort of a lead. Right now, UMBC's leading scorer, Darnell Rogers, is not on the floor. Right now, their leading scorer for the season, Brandon Horvath, has zero points. So take advantage of that while UMBC is down, and start to build up a lead. Akin on his first free throw, he hits it. Unusual since he is averaging over 48% from the charity strike this season. And it's the substitutions. Omar Hobway and Stevenson Moore checks out, brings back in Mogi and Taiki Green. Mogi on the court, that keeps a little momentum rolling as far as Stony Brook's concerned. Second free throw from Akin, it's good. So it's rare for him to be able to make both free throws, probably as it is for Stony Brook with Jaden Sales. Ties the game up at 15, 9.25 left to go in the first half. I love how many minutes Jordan McKenzie is getting. He's yeah. one of the veteran players on this team. When you play an experienced team like UMBC, you have to rely on your own veterans. He's got good experience. And away from the ball, fouls called against Gunayasith. A real bit of a reach, and I think against Sales. Thought that Sales was about to try and get the ball from McKenzie. And that's the third team foul on the Retrievers. Rodriguez will inbound the ball on the baseline right of the net. He'll go out to McKenzie, left wing. Going inside to Gee against Horvath. Mo Gee. Thought about moving inside, he'll go out to the left for Green. Back over to Gee. Gee trying to look for inside, going over the spin move, lays it up and in. Good job by Mo Gee to be able to work past Brandon Horvath's defenses. And Stony Brook back up 17 to 15. Now Idle Rock with the ball. Shifts over to the top. Moving inside left elbow. Usually that's where he would think about taking a shot. But he won't. Goes over to Kennedy. Over to Atkin. Bad pass stolen away by Rodriguez. Stonebrook working well with defense as opposed to yesterday. Right wing McKenzie. He'll try another three. Goes too strong. Green tried to pick up the rebound. But too many retrievers in front of him. And Idle Rock will get the ball. Move it up inside over to Atkin. Now over to Buniasis. RJ Idle Rock has it. In the left wing against McKenzie. Working against his offenses, contested layup, it's good. RJ Elrock looks strong, trying to stay strong off of that 23-point game that he had yesterday. 
his first points of the game. Geno Ford has opted to put his starters in against the B squad of the Retrievers. So the starters need to start scoring. James Sales almost lost the ball. He did. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by him. This is the problem that he had yesterday. His ability to handle the ball is not 100% guaranteed. Somebody of his height and stature, you got to understand... He's got to understand that he needs to use that to his advantage. Be able to hold on to the ball well and understand that you will get double teamed. Horvath tried to go for an inbound to Rodgers, but the ref said he had to try it again. Couldn't tell whether what that was all about. 8.04 left to go in the first half, all tied up at 17. Swingbrook still having a little problem with the shooting as, as they did yesterday. At 28 in the first half, they're up to 17 so far with eight minutes to go in for half number one. Bunaya says, trying to take a contested layup against McKenzie misses. He'll pick up the rebound from Sales. Over the left wing, Rodriguez, a quick three. Bang! Rodriguez going deep for the second time today. He's up to six points. It's 20 to 17, Stony Brook. Rodriguez is not afraid to take those shots. Running a good assist from McKenzie. Veteran experience that he has has allowed everybody else, every other young player on this team, to start shining well. Good teacher, student relationship. Idle Rock with the ball. Trying to push it inside. Has to go out to the right wing against Gee. Goes over to Atkin, top of the key. Out to the left wing for Rogers. Rodriguez guarding him. Trying to spin around. Goes up for a contested layup. High arcing. No good. Green picks up the rebound before it goes out of bounds. We approach the seven minute mark as Seawolves will gain possession. Looking to extend on their lead. The biggest matchup that I think has affected this game has been Jaden Sales versus Brandon Horvath. Both have zero points. Both we know can score in bunches. Well, that's a big, big surprise. Jane Sales with the ball. Mid-range jumper. Go too strong off the right rim. No good. Jacob with the ball. And he is fouled by Mogi. And that will be his first of the contest. 